Hello everyone, it's Mr. Christie here with a quick question involving the range of a particular function. At the moment, the way the function looks makes it very difficult to work out the range. So what I'm going to do here is rewrite it in a different manner. And to do that, I'm going to first use algebraic long division. So that involves dividing 6x plus 1 by 3x minus 2. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. I multiply 2 by 3x minus 2 to give me 6x minus 4. I subtract it to get remainder 5. That means I can rewrite f of x as 2 plus the remainder divided by the original thing I divided by. Now, if you're not sure how I got that, let's think about using division on a situation like this, 7 divided by 2. How many 2's go into 7? Well, it's 6. 6, not 6. How many 2's go into 7? 3. 3 times 2 is 6. I subtract here and I get 1, which is my remainder. And that means I can write 7 over 2 as 3 plus the remainder 1 over 2. Right, and we all agree here that 7 over 2 is the same as 3 and a half. Similarly, I've got my 2 that came from the division. And my remainder of 5, which I uh, write over my original divisor, like I wrote 1 over the original thing that I divided by, which is 2. Okay, why is this useful? Well, first of all, I'm going to write it as 5 over 3x minus 2 plus 2. And then I'm going to talk about asymptotes. And the whole purpose of, or the whole point of this was to find the asymptotes of the graph. And also, which quadrants I would be in. Okay, let me explain. So, first of all, this number here, number on the outside, corresponds to the horizontal asymptote. So, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. And the number that makes the denominator 0 corresponds to the vertical asymptote. What do I mean by that? Well, the vertical asymptote occurs when 3x minus 2 equals 0, which is when x is equal to 2 thirds. So x is 2 thirds would be over here, and my vertical asymptote occurs there. And again, why does that happen? Because the function will be undefined when the denominator of this fraction is 0, which is when, we, when x is 2 thirds. Next, we're going to look at this number to determine which quadrants we're going to be in. And I don't exactly mean quadrants, because quadrants would correspond to the axes, but I'm talking more about these asymptotes. You can think of these as my new quadrants, right? These ones here. Now, if that number is positive, I'm going to be in the first and third quadrants. And if that number is negative, I'm going to be in the second and fourth. And because it's positive, I'm going to be in the first and third. So let me just draw this one. And before, and again, should not touch the axis, um, the, the asymptote, and before I draw this one, I've got this domain of x more than or equal to 0. So I'm not going to go beyond, I'm not going to go past the y-axis. So I'm not going to cross the y-axis, essentially. Now, what number does it intercept the y-axis with? Well, to work that out, I'm just going to plug in the 0 because the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So let's just do that over here. What is f of 0? Well, f of 0 would be 1 over 0 minus 2 minus 2, which is minus a half. So it's going to intercept here, and minus a half, and it's going to look like this. Again, shouldn't touch the vertical asymptote. And now I can use this sketch to find the range. Well, first of all, I can see that I can have y values, including minus a half, because I'm including 0, and anything less than that. So I have y less than or equal to minus a half. But I also have y values that are greater than 2. I'm not including 2, but I can be anything greater than 2. So or y greater than 2. Um, I could write that in set notation. This union. And that would be my final answer. That is the range. Either of these would count. It depends on what the question asks, but let's just say this is the range. 